From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. One more corner pocket. Now here's Warchant.com's ass on Hunch of Andy and Corey Clark. Wake up! What is up, everybody? It is Wake Up War Chant. It is presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill in Tallahassee, Florida. Coming up on today's show, scrimmage thoughts from a scrimmage we weren't able to watch, but it's fine. We get it. Them the rules. Finishing up the Renegade Express finally, as well as the Zaxby's indescribably good player of the week. Warchant.com, the ultimate semi sports source. The launch special still going on. Only $1 to join Warchant.com for an entire year of access. No tricks. No smoke and mirrors. Just one American dollar. You can get access to the website for an entire year. Thumbs up, five-star rating and review. We are presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill in Tallahassee, Florida, cptallybar.com. Daily lunch specials. It's Monday. You want a burger. Go build your own burger over at the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. The lunch special runs. Only $8.99. Check it out. You won't be disappointed. Speaking of disappointment, you're never disappointed when you hear from this guy, Corey Clark. That guy. What's up, Corey Clark? What's up, buddy? How are you doing? You have a good weekend, I hope? Yeah, it was cool to kind of quasi have a Sunday off, if you will. I mean, kind of had a Saturday off as well, although that 945 Zoom on a Saturday night, a little bit weird, Mike, a little bit weird. Mm. But Mm -hmm. um, what are you going to do? It's fine. You know, you had had all day to do stuff, run errands, go out to dinner a little bit earlier than usual, and then come home and talk to uh, the head football coach. Who'd you go out to dinner with? Nobody. I'm saying you probably did. Most people probably did. I did not. Oh, but you did go out to dinner? No, no. Oh, no. I did. I, actually, uh, on Sunday night, I went out to dinner by myself. How about that? All right, look at that, cooking with grease. I mean, uh, I'm still, you know, still up in Georgia. Uh, Brady had a, something left over that he was going to eat, so I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go. I'm going to go sit by myself and eat dinner. I don't. I'm not too proud to do that. I nice. like doing it. Okay. And cool. also, like when we're when we're talking about this deal for War Champ, folks. I mean, legitimately, like you're gonna you're gonna want it. You're going to want it now because, like, in three weeks, you're going to want all this football news. The season's going to start, and you're like, man, this is a $100 value, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to pay $100 because I want to see what Corey, Ira, uh, Jeff Cameron sometimes is going to be on the boards. We're, we're, we're trying to finagle him on the boards, but I'm on the boards a lot. Aslan and Ira and Gene are on the boards a ton. Obviously, Michael Langston's on the boards a ton answering recruiting questions. Um, Tom Lang does wanna... AMAs, Ask Me yeah. Anything. Yeah, Tom Lang's doing AMAs. Like, you get to interact with us in a more intimate way than asking a question that gets read once a week. And we love the Renegade Express, but it's a little more intimate. And you get it all for a dollar. And it's football season. So it is the perfect time um, to, 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 uh, to try it out, man. It just – we're better than the other guys. I don't know how else to say it. And, I'm, again, Hashtag it's not because humble. of me. Hashtag humble. Yeah, but it's not because of me, but it it's because of the bit. team Gene's put together. This is the best you're going to get, and it's not – in my opinion, it's not even really all that close, and it's a dollar. Plus, you get to interact with all the people on the Tribal Council. It's just a perfect uh, perfect promotion. Speaking of which, we'll get to the rest of the questions finally from Renegade Express. Uh, I don't know. We'll have to maybe make a smaller window for everybody to get their questions in, and we also will share our thoughts, I guess, on the scrimmage that we heard about from Mike Norvell and the coaches. But speaking of the message boards and interacting with the people, Corey, mm. do, you want to do, uh, do we need to do our, like, our annual this is why we do what we do uh, somebody was a little bit, uh, I guess, was curious. That's probably the, the best way to put it. Was a little bit curious why we all don't call Mike Norvell coach. Or, oh, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you want to sure. want to describe maybe your reasoning why you call him Mike? Uh, I mean, look, man, uh, I get it. Some people si- see it as a dis- uh, like a sign of respect to call him by that. But um, you know, I, if I had a friend or somebody that I talked to, I don't know, every three or four days and he's younger than me or around my same age, and Mike Norvell is younger than me, I don't know that I would call him, you know, hey, Dr. Smith, good to see you, Dr. Smith. If I'm friends with him or if I hang out with him a lot, I feel like I'm going to call him Mike. Um, and, and, you know, I've always had a saying that he's not my coach. I, and certainly my son calls his coach his coach because it's a sign of respect and it's the title of the team. Like, he's a part of the team, so he calls him coach. That said, Bobby Bowden wasn't my coach either. I called him coach. So I don't know if it's like a, uh, but but I never called Jimbo coach, I never called uh, Mike Martin senior coach, I never called Mike Martin junior coach. I mean they had their own nicknames. Uh, I never called Mickey Andrews coach. Um, 
I, I said, Willie Taggart, I didn't call coach. So I don't, I don't know if it's just like the seniority that made me want to call Bobby Bowden coach, but I would have just felt goofy calling him Bobby. Yeah. I just would. I mean, it's because I grew up with him. I grew up cheering for his programs. He was the elder statesman. He was a, a legend. Um, yeah. So I just called him, uh, I, I call, I would call, I would call him coach Bowden. Um, normally I just say, Hey coach. Um, but yeah, with, with Mike, I don't know, man. I just, he's not my coach. I wouldn't call Jeff Collins coach or, uh, Manny Cristobal coach. What about, Our, what about uh, Kirby? The dude at uh, Billy oh. Napier. They're, they're, I'd call him Billy. Yeah. I don't know. If I showed up to like an interview with those guys, I think that goes to your point that we, we speak to him every day practically. So That's what I meant. Like more... if I covered those teams. As well oh, okay, okay. I thought like if you were going to pop into like a Miami post game after they get drubbed by the Knowles in November. Right, correct. If right. you just show me, like, yo, Mario, what's it feel like to have Florida State be your homecoming game and you just got humiliated? Yeah, probably kick Coach Cristobal. I mean, that's how I would pr- approach it. But. Well, and the thing is, so Ira chimed in, and he does call most everybody coach. Um, I think he said he does it mainly because it's, it's uh, I don't know, it's easier than knowing. I don't remember what he said exactly. He just says uh, coaches call each other coach, so to yeah, make that's them comfortable. Right. So they're used, yeah, the it's a comfortability yeah. thing. Um, and like I said in my post is like, well, if he calls me Mr. Clark, I promise I'll call him Coach Norbell. <laughs> well, like I don't if, want if, to call me Mr. Hudgevandy. That's the, uh, yeah. Yeah, but you're younger than him. Like yeah, if he's like gonna, if you want to show some respect for your elders, I mean, like you know, he could call me Mr. Clark. I'd call him Coach Norbell, and we'd be on, we'd be on our way with our titles. Uh, but Ira, Ira, the the reason I make fun of Ira is not because he calls people Coach when he's asking them a question. It's that sometimes he'll refer to them when he's talking about them in another conversation. Is well, here's what Coach Norbell is thinking, or here's what um, you know, uh, I don't know, Doctor Barron is thinking. <laughs> When he's talking about uh, the, the yeah, former president. You would always be like, you don't call him President Thrasher. You would just say Thrasher. You're like, right, you yeah. Say, you, don't, you don't say President Thrasher. You yeah, so, but it's Dr. Barron. Alford, Al- you said Alford. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, or Mr. Coburn. I think he might have even said Mr. Coburn. But I always thought that, I just thought that was funny. But he, he's so ingrained in doing that, I think. And yeah, I just, um, with Willie, with Jimbo, with Mike, it never even occurs to me to call him coach because they're not my coach. And it's not a sign of disrespect. I respect all of them. I wouldn't call Adam Fuller Mr. Uh, coach Fuller. He's not my coach. That's all. Okay. But I get it. I also understand that for some people, it is a sign of respect to call them by their title. Yeah. To me personally, the $5 million he makes a year yeah. more than makes up for a media member calling him by his actual first name. All right, so we did speak to Coach Mike Norvell. Coach Mike. Yeah, Coach Mike. That's not bad, right? Coach Mike, on Saturday night yeah. as well as uh, Coach Atkins, Coach Fuller, Coach Papuchas, John, Alex, mm. and Adam as we uh, all know them by. Um, you're you're gassing up the Deuce Span train. I, I kind of want you to stop shoveling all that coal in there, man, but I guess let the locomotive go, man. You've, you've seen him in a couple practices and apparently did well in a scrimmage. Mm-hmm. I don't know, 35 catches? You penciling him in for 35? Why are you saying that? What did I do to gas him up? No, I'm, I'm a gas up. It sounds like I'm uh, picking at you. But you, you, you had a tweet that you know made it sound like you, you really. Well, like what I was just, I just want to like get crux that of your story as well, kind of on Saturday. I night. didn't write that story. Get your, get your mind right. That was an Iris story. Um, I wrote about the defense, but, uh, but no, I, I mean, I did in the initial because Norvell talked about him. He's the one guy that he mentioned completely unsolicited in the opening um, statement. Yeah. Yes, yeah. but as I pointed out on a post later on the tribal council, it's like you know. Let's see who he, when he starts working with the other quarterbacks. Okay. Like right now, it was A.J. Duffy that threw him the pass. Yeah. Sorry, the long touchdown pass. That was A.J. Duffy, which is awesome. It's cool that they're hooking up, but if Deuce Span is really going to be a contributor on this team, like a big one, let's wait and see how many times Jordan Travis hooks up with him in the next two or three weeks. Okay. That, to me, is the telltale sign. Not that he's torching um, some guys that are probably working with the third unit. Let's see if he's, and we don't know. He might've gotten some work with Tate Rod. Well, sorry, with Jordan Travis or Tate Rodemaker in the scrimmage. We don't know. We'll get to see more tomorrow. And then obviously the rest of the week. But uh, yeah, I, you know, I basically, I just tweeted that, you know, it sounds like the deuce got loose just because I want to keep saying that. I want that a part of the lexicon, um, Florida State lexicon, the deuce is loose. But he did. He made, apparently made a big touchdown catch, a long one. Uh, It sounded also like uh, he caught a couple intermediate routes and made nice runs after the catch which to me is a big deal with him. And then he had a long kick return, which, you know, when you're looking for little nuggets and morsels from a scrimmage you weren't allowed to watch, you'll jump all over that. Because again, he had had some nice moments, really some really positive moments through the first eight practices. Uh, he had one, and I, what I thought was a horrible day, but the all, all the other practices he looked 
solid to good, and then to stack a, a really good scrimmage performance on top of that, let's see where let's see where he's running this week. You know what I mean? Don't you think that'll be a sign if all of a sudden he's lining up on the other side of Pokey some? That maybe the coaches are gonna the coaches see something in him and they plan on him being a part of the actual offense. Yeah, I wonder if this is like a crucial kind of evaluation week because they're gonna go six days in a row of practicing. So I feel like this is where they're really gonna be able to figure out who who's gonna be part of the plans in certain personnel groupings and certain situations. So uh, to your point, I guess if we start seeing him maybe in, in Jacksonville running with the. Uh, uh, Jordan Travis crew, then that kind of indicates portends to possibly his top end, uh, you know, prospects for this season. What caught my ear um, mostly, I, I like what he said about Tate. I mean, he was like, man, he really plays the balls quite nicely. I was like, all right, that's cool. That's nice. I like that. And then the offensive line still seems to be a bit banged up. Um, I think there were some rumors out there about, you know, Caden Lyles possibly tearing his ACL. Uh, I mean, we haven't heard any reports about that. I mean, there's nothing confirmed or substantiated about that. I think it might be uh, somebody on a message board has heard that, which, you know, people on message boards aren't always wrong. Uh, they're not always right either. So, uh, But we've we've seen these guys out at practice the last time we were out there. So, you know, we didn't see anything to indicate that they would be gone for a while. But the fact they didn't scrimmage on Saturday, probably by the sounds of it, I mean, I'm guessing, again, we weren't there to watch it, but the fact that Mike Norvell kind of mentioned that, you know, they're still – Mixing and matching on the offensive line, that to me sounds like they probably don't have who they want out there when they want them out there. But it, we'll, we'll monitor it. But, again, there's I know there's some people that commented about what's going on with that. We we don't know, uh, and I don't want to be a coward. and be like, oh, we're not going to ask him. But, yeah, we're, we're probably not going to ask him because he's kind of outlined to us what he wants to talk about, what he doesn't want to talk about, and he doesn't want to specifically talk about a player that's not out at practice. So if he volunteers it, which he did with a guy like Cam McDonald, uh, we can talk about that. Uh, but otherwise, uh, you know, that's that with that. Yeah, and here, here's what I would say with that when it comes to some of that. You know, I remember with, uh, was it Brownlee in the spring that wasn't around? Is yeah. that right? I, yeah, correct, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I what we can do, and Norvell's very uh, gracious and open-minded about this, is we can go to the SIDs and say, look, man, it's hard. People want to know why Jarvis Brownlee's name isn't being brought up at all. People are asking us questions about how's he looking. And can you just at we don't and we also don't want to uh, you know irk the head coach by asking him with cameras rolling because again we are so grateful legitimately grateful I, I just I can't tell you reading all these other practice reports from all these other um, affiliates from other schools I mean sorry not other but other schools their practice reports you're not getting anything anything. And, and so they're just completely locked out. So we are really grateful that we get to watch every second of almost every practice. It, but there are some ground rules, and that's one of them. Don't ask me about injuries or don't ask about specifics with injuries. But when it's something like, um, you know, if you, if, if you happen to see Jordan Travis taken off the field in a wheelchair, what we would do is go to the SID and say, man, can you please have him address Jordan Travis just so we don't have to ask him and be the bad guy? Can you tell him that we want to know if if he can, either before the mics, before he steps in front of the cameras, or during if he wants to give us an opening statement about this is what happened to so-and-so, player X. So maybe you could do something like that if, like, for instance, you happen to see a starting offensive lineman that looked like he was not anywhere close to playing anytime soon. We could maybe go to the SID and say, hey, would Mike want to address, sorry, would Coach Norvell want to address <laughs> this um, before before the press conference or make an opening statement about it? I think that's something we can do, right? I think that's something that would be, uh, would be fair, and it might be something we end up doing here because that's what we did with Brownlee. In the spring, because he was he was just wasn't around, and eventually, I mean, no, the guy I think played. that was unsolicited, man. Because I think there there was rumors out there that he wasn't participating because he was a contract holdout, like he was waiting for some sort of nil deal that didn't come oh, through. And that's, well, and that's this why might be like, me. This also might be me take being grandiose and taking more credit than I deserve. It's delusions of grandeur. But no. I did that same day ask the SID, like, can you ask him if oh, he okay. talk about Brownlee? Oh, I know that. All right, just All so right. we don't have to ask him. Uh, but he might have been planning to do it anyway. Um, so yeah, a, a, if, if somebody, if a, if a guy that you think is going to start or is going to be competing to start is out for an extended period of time, um, and we, and he won't mention it because I would think something like if Cam McDonald had, has broken his foot and is out for the season, 
you would hope that as much as we love Norvell and the way he deals with us, you would hope he'd let us know that. You know what I mean? Like if, if they knew for sure a player was out for the season. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, okay, he, he tore his ACL. He's done. He's not playing anymore. You would hope that they would have a public announcement or at least tell us. So, you know, he can talk about moving past that and everything else. But who knows? Again, injuries are goofy. They're, 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 they're an odd thing to report on, odd thing to ask about, um, especially when you're getting so much access. So we, there's, a, there's a balance. There's a fine line. We try to, uh, we try to do what we can. Well, I love it. It's, it's you know, I'm, I'm being, you know, jovial here. I'm choking around. I'm joshing with, uh, with our friends here on the podcast. But it's like we've spent all this time talking about how there's all this depth on the offensive line. And now that there's these injuries, everyone's like freaking out. Everyone's like, man, Mike Norvell can't catch a break. We can't even get into a game before we sustain an injury. And, you know, part of me is like, well, man, like it would be a bummer if they, you know, if this turns out all these guys are unavailable. But, again, we haven't heard or seen anything that makes us believe these guys will be out for an extended period of time. We'll be back out there later today. Uh, and we could probably make yeah. some observations and if maybe ask a question or two that won't uh, irk the head coach, which, uh, again, you know, he's given us rules, so – we have to follow the rules. Sure. We're going to follow the rules. Sure. Anything else catch your ear from talking to all those coordinators? I mean, you know, Sam McCall made a play. I think there's somebody here. Alan First Straw uh, that commented on the uh, Renegade Express thread last week asking about Sam McCall. I haven't seen his name mentioned. Made a made a, made a pick, sounds like, or a turnover. There was, there was yeah. somewhere that was phrased that I'm fully appreciated. So. Well, a takeaway. Takeaway. Because okay. that's what he calls him as a takeaway. Oh, right. But it was an interception. Yeah. Um, and then he also, you know, Fuller – talked about uh, some tackle he made. He talked about it twice, actually. Some tackle he made, I guess, near the line of scrimmage. He didn't describe it all that well as much as he – and he describes things really well most of the times, but that, I just couldn't quite picture what he was talking about. Um, but uh, that he made some chest-to-chest -chest tackle that they were really fired up about where he ran through and it's he ran through the uh, the ball carrier – and uh, said that wasn't as impactful a play, but it was a, it was almost a more impressive play than the interception he had. But yeah, he was he was uh, he said that McCall had a couple of nice plays. You know, I think Norvell mentioned in Bethune that quickly. Uh, again, he I think he was unsolicited too. Um, yeah, he came out in the opening statement, and that matters. I mean, I know maybe you guys don't think so, but it matters when you know if I ask you, hey, how's Sam McCall look? A coach isn't going to say, well, I'll be honest, he kind of sucked. I'm not sure why he's here. Um, it, he'll, he'll, they're always going to say something positive about anybody they're asked about for the most part, almost always. I've been doing this for a long time. It's almost always, but have your ear out for the guys they talk about unsolicited that they're not asked about. Cause those are the guys that really stand out. Um, and I, and I, you know, Tatum Bethune was a guy he mentioned right after Deuce Span actually, yeah. that said he just flew around. And again, um, the fact that they said that Papuchas, uh, Papuchas and Norvell, uh, talked about the defensive line. Uh, playing oh, well overall, which actually, I think is a good thing. Yeah. Oh. Actually, sorry to jump you, but yeah, I, I feel like I buried the lead. I, I, I like the way Papuch just answered my question about Jared Verse. Basically, I mean, he said that they're confident that he'll be where he needs to be when they start the season. Because part of me, and people were commenting on some of the threads about, hey, man, like, you know, what's going on with Jared Verse? Thought we'd hear a lot more about him at this point in camp, which is like, yeah, true. That is, that is very true. He, I mean, he hasn't been uh, Lawrence Taylor reincarnate out there by any stretch, uh, but he hasn't been absent either. So. Uh, I, I did like the way he kind of addressed it that, um, you know, obviously he needs reps, but he's got the build. He's got the desire. He has the tools and everything, and he feels confident he'll be ready by the time, uh, you know. I mean, I, I don't know if Duquesne's the, uh, the the takeoff point, but hopefully by LSU time we'll, we'll see flat not flash, but we'll see a, a level of consistency out of him that uh, they believe in. So You know, it's hard, too, when, when you talk about what we watch because the way the drills and the, and the team sessions are aligned, uh, you know, he gets a lot of work. All these guys, there's not any much standing around. But, you know, the, they, they rotate in, you know, as you would in a practice, especially in early August and late July. You're rotating in like a whole new defensive line or a whole new linebacking core, a whole new secondary. And, it, you know, the way Florida State kind of runs their practices, it's normally about every three plays. So it's hard when you only get three plays. And I'm talking about 11 on 11. Like, I'm not watching the one-on-one -on -one stuff where they're getting a lot, where Verse is getting a lot more work there, too. And obviously, the drill work he does with Papuchas. But in the actual team settings, it's, you know, it's hard to make that big of an impression when you're getting, I don't know, man, maybe 12 reps total in 11 on 11, somewhere in that neighborhood, you'd think. Um, now, again, they're, they're, they're busting their butts. It's not like, well, I don't want you to think, oh, man, he's only 12 plays. Like, he's supposed to play 70. 
They did the same thing with Jermaine Johnson last year. He played 80 snaps a game. So they're getting built up and get physically ready, but it's hard to make a real impression when you don't get a ton of at-bats. And he's just, those defensive linemen, they rotate in and out a lot. So maybe 12 is a low number, but it's it's not more than 20 um, or 25 or so, and that's in a practice. So, And I will say this, and also when they can't tackle. They can't sack the quarterback. Yeah, you can't hit him. Yeah, so. you can, and you can't tackle. So you can't. You can chase things down. You can force bad throws, but you're not going to have a bone jarring hit that you would really step up. And I will say, you know, I, I've overall, I've been in, I've been impressed with Verse. It's, he to me, he hasn't been quiet. I don't think it's been a quiet camp. I mean, he hadn't batted any balls in the air for interceptions or anything, but he's had a lot of, in my opinion, he's had a lot of, uh, um, you know, ru- you know. Uh, golly, QB hurries. Good grief. I kept wanting to say uh, pass rushes. So he's had some QB hurries. He's forced balls out um, quickly. He's beaten guys really quickly uh, every now and again. He gets blocked a lot. I mean, that's what happens when you play defensive end. But I, I've been, uh, I, I, again, I, I, I think he's going to be a big deal for this team, man, in, in a number of ways. It, that personality is, man, he better be good. You know, the way... <laughs> The way he talks and the way he acts on the field, he better be good, and I think he is good. I, I really do. I've seen a lot. I've seen enough from him through the first seven or eight practices that I think he's got a, a lot of tools. And when Papuchas was talking about him, he's like, "Yeah, he's got all the things you want. He's got the physical. He's got you know size, speed, a great mindset. He never stops. He literally never stops. His energy is a hundred miles an hour all the time. He's just got to work more on fundamentals, like technique, and also how he fits into the frame of a defense. Meaning probably." Sometimes you can't always try to make a play from your defensive end spot. Sometimes you do have to stay home. It's not all about you going to make a play. It's you doing your job so the other 10 guys can go make their play. And I'm not saying I've seen that any, anything out of that uh, from Burst, but we've all seen defensive ends that are like that. When they go streaming down at the quarter, streaming at the running back down the line, when the quarterback is rolled out and there's nobody on that side of the field. Saw it a couple of times against uh, Syracuse, right? Mm-hmm. Where, where you just, that's not your job right there, man. Trust your other teammates to do a job. So I think that's what they're tr- still trying to drill into him is, yeah, man, you're really good. You've got a lot of physical gifts, but you also play a role within a team. And this is what that is. The clutch shots, the biggest hits. It's time for the Zaxby's indescribably good player of the week. The man has spoken. That man's Noah is my friend. But anyhow, it's the Zaxby's indescribably good player of the week time. Um, hopefully we'll get to see more stuff going on here practice this week. But as of now, my guy Jarian Jones, sorry everybody, Mr. 601, Mr. Mississippi, Mr. McGee, Mr. Simpson County, Mr. Northwest Rankin, he's playing really well. He's playing really well, and the coaches have also validated our eyes, which we've all seen. So the fact that this guy could be in the running for playing slot cornerback, and if he's your backup slot cornerback, and you got Kevin Knowles out there with the first team, who's going to throw on us? Who? Huh? DBU's making a comeback. Jarian Jones had a great camp thus far. As my Zach was indescribably good player of the week. What do you got, Corey? What a great transition, Aslan, because when you talk about DBU, I'm going to one of the OGs, at least from my era. era. Um, Leroy Butler, man. I was so awesome. Uh, to see him uh, uh, enshrined in the Pro Football Hall of Fame on Saturday. He was the first one to go, which I'm not quite sure I understand why, because alphabetically he wasn't the first, but whatever. Um, it was it just was really cool, man. And uh, it was cool that his mom, who passed away in 2016, I believe, actually helped him write that speech before she died because she believed, and so did Leroy, with good reason, that eventually he would get into Canton. And he did. And it's just awesome, man. Not just what it does for Florida State, but he's such a good ambassador for the school. Um, he mentioned Florida State, said his life changed forever there. He talked about how Bobby Bowden came to recruit him, even though he lived in the hardcore inner city of Jacksonville. Not a great place to live at all. He warned Bowden about coming in, but he's like, I, wanna, I want your mom to hear me offer you a scholarship. So, that again, it says mo- a lot about both of those guys. And I was there for the punt rooski. I wasn't there for the Lambeau Leap. Don't care about that stuff. But I was there for the punt rooski, man. It was one of my all-time favorite memories with my dad, and he was one of my all-time. He was one of my dad's all-time favorite players, and I just felt uh, just blessed, really, honestly, to get to watch that dude play college football for three years and be an All-American in 1989 and be a part of probably my favorite ever play in college football in 1988. So he's my uh, Zaxby's indescribably good player of a lifetime. Player, of, he gets a lifetime award from Zaxby's for for the career he had. Past, present, and um, hopefully a future uh, with Jarian Jones as well. We, we knocked it all out this week. <laughs> the Zaxby's indescribably good player of the week.
Let's get back to it, Corey. Uh, again, welcome, everybody, to WordChant.com, all our first-time subscribers. Uh, again, we'll try to figure out a way to get to your questions the day you post it as opposed to four or five days later. But anyhow, 229 Knowles. Don't know if he's related to Knowles 229, but anyhow. Wake up, first-time poster. My dad, a member of WarChant some years ago. I figured I'd give it a shot with the $1 special. There we go. Got a family legacy going on here. Nice avatar. He's got his child in a, in a Florida State 1 uniform. Looks like a toddler or an okay. infant, rather. Uh, yeah, it's infant, not a toddler. Toddlers can walk. This is an infant. Right. Um, yeah. Anyhow, he's from Bainbridge. A couple famous folks from there are the current University of Georgia head football coach Kirby Smart and David oh. Ross, manager of the Cubs, which I guess are, they've turned it around, huh, the Cubs? Thought he was going to be on his way out, but apparently they've turned it around. Oh, they have? I thought they were still in last place. Oh, never mind. I thought I heard that, well, I heard that on ESPN the other day. <laughs> Sorry, Maybe they I won two wrong. games in a row or something. Yeah. All right, question. Which of the quarterbacks on this roster would be the starter for the 2013 team if Jameis wasn't on that team? Oh. None of them. <laughs> Just Devontae Wildcat? Well, no. I, oh, I, I thought it meant, like, would they any of them beat out Jacob Coker? Oh, okay. That's yeah, what I, I thought the question was. Well, I just, that's, I'm, I'm reading it verbatim. My question so, is, which of the quarterbacks on this roster oh, would be I the see. starter like, for the third? Okay, I got it. So that he prob- I mean, there's two ways to take that, but I think it means, uh, like, with the talent around him. With that kind of talent around him, would Tate Rodemaker be the, be the – it wouldn't be A.J. Duffy, not a true freshman. Jameis didn't play as a true freshman. Um, so it's between Travis and, and Rodemaker, and that's a really good question. It's a really, really good question. It's I, like Sean McGuire versus a little bit of a lesser Christian Ponder, in my opinion, as of now. I, yeah. I mean, I, boy, I, hmm. what I've seen – and the way Jimbo likes to throw the ball in the middle of the field and downfield, I I just think that I, I think Rodemaker would be the guy. Yeah. 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 PSA. I think Jordan Travis has been really, really needed for 2020 to 2022 Florida State football. I've said it a million times. He's the only reason they've won any games at all for the most part. But with all that talent around him, with an offensive line that would keep him upright, with that kind of running game, in those three wideouts, I, I, you know, but also maybe Jordan sees it better and quicker with that kind of, like, you know, his development would have been further along because he would have trusted it. Like it's, it's easy for us to say he needs to get rid out, uh, get out of his hands quick. He needs to trust what he sees, man. He hasn't seen a wide receiver get open off the snap <laughs> in his lifetime. Jameis got that. Jameis like, Oh, there's a big six, six guy running free in the middle of the field. Let me throw it up to the avatar. And, and, you know, Jordan Travis doesn't get, hasn't gotten that experience. So it's really hard to say. But I'm just saying right now, from what I've seen, to couch it as much as possible, um, yeah. I'll say Tate Rodemaker. I agree with that. I agree with that. Okay. Um, P.S. I, I love gets, you, Jordan. Uh, I, I know Corey gets 90% of the love. That's a high number. Uh, Aslan's my favorite. <laughs> no shade to Corey. Glad you're feeling better. None taken. None taken. I always like to hear that, man. I like number. I like my partner. I want other people to like my partner. I think most people do, Aslan. You number. know that. I got you. Holton44 from Palatka, home of Michelle McCool, former WWE champ and wife of The Undertaker. Nice. Okay. Nice. Okay. I think John L. Williams, an old fullback at Florida that played in the league for a long time. That okay. was from Palatka. I think, uh, who's that guy that everybody wanted to be the athletic director? I think Jeff Purinton's from Palatka. Oh, okay. All I right. I think. All right. All right. Uh, both Wake Forest and North Carolina State play Clemson the week before they play Florida State. Yeah. Does that improve our chances a little in those games? Yes. 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 Absolutely. Uh-huh. Especially if they can take that quarterback and fling him into the side of a, uh, like a, I don't know, side of a mascot or something. Does does Clemson does have a tiger on the field, right? No, but it's just they, LSU, like a, they never have. They got a mascot. They got like a furry one. Like Memphis has got a real hurt. tiger. LS, Mike the tiger, though, for LSU, he's always in his habitat. He never. They don't like bring him into like a, on a cage into the field. But yeah, Memphis has got a tiger. They used to in a cage on the field. They used to. They used to do that with Mike the tiger. Yeah. Well, There's I, a famous. I've told. I think I've told this story when Miami played out there uh, in Baton Rouge in like the late '80s, early '90s. They were rattling the cage. The players were. And like barking at the barking at the tiger, barking at the tiger. Yeah, which I mean, part of me was like, I mean, if the guy, if the trainer guy just happened to, I, well, no, that would have been. I can't imagine what would happen. Would that? Would they say the trainer guy got mad because Miami was beating the bejesus out of LSU and their players were taunting the tiger and shaking the cage, and he let he let Mike the tiger out of the cage. 
are we still playing football? Is there a thing as college football right now, 30 years later? <laughs> or does that end the sport? Oh, man. Well, at least at least the Seminoles wouldn't be in the crosshairs of everybody. It would be PETA would be taking out all these animal mascots. That'd be well, a, I mean, a you concern. know, and I also don't know how. I mean, that's a fast team. Miami's fast, especially back then. But he a tiger could probably kill. On a, on a sideline of 70 players, he could probably get to three or four, yeah. right? Yeah. I before three. they get to the locker room. Yeah. yeah. I guess your play is to try to jump into the crowd at that point. But apparently, yeah. anyway, that's how my mind works. Sorry, everyone. Apparently, up until 2017, he was out there. But yeah, oh, apparently, there you go. starting in 17, they decided the Tiger will not go into Tiger Stadium on home football game days. I wonder what led to that. There had to be something that led to that. That's yeah, crazy. Because when I was working in Mississippi, I'd go down there, uh, you know, to cover Mississippi uh, State and Ole Miss. And I remember, like, you walk by his habitat, and like I saw him. Uh, but maybe that was another tiger. Maybe well, no, a, he has a habitat, like but during the game, they take him out of the habitat, or they did, and put him in that cage and wheel him into the stadium. I know, but like, I'd, I'd be, I'm not Ira. I mean, I walk up to a stadium like an hour before kickoff. Not, you know, like, I mean, I oh, figure right. yeah. they'd, they'd have to have that well prepared in advance to do that. But um, yeah, that's a, that's a big deal. That's something that maybe, uh, you know, we should factor in a little bit more is that uh, there'll be that body blow theory. Maybe Clemson weakens them up a little bit. And then we can take advantage of it. Do you think? I mean, yeah, do you think should, DJ's right? going to be the quarterback? Team. Do you think DJ is going to be the quarterback when he plays us for Clemson? You think it's going to be no. a young Galilee? No, I, I think there's so much um, negativity in that fan base towards that quarterback that as soon as he has a couple of bad games or bad quarters or bad moments, I know. But Dabo um, likes to spite everybody. Like, like, I don't no, but he saying. also likes to win, man. Like he spited everybody for a game and a half. Until all of a sudden he's like, well, Deshaun Watson's my quarterback now. And that happened against Florida State. If Deshaun Watson had started against Florida State in 2014, they win that game. Probably handily. But they didn't. They started uh, Proctor. Is that his last name? Yeah. I don't know. Stout? Maybe Cole Stout. I thought it was Will Proctor, but he might have been earlier. It's tough to get all those kind of mediocre Clemson quarterbacks. They <laughs> Willie Corn and yeah. you know, all um, those dudes. But, uh, yeah, so they started that senior for, like, the first quarter and a half, and then they let Deshaun play the rest of the game. And um, so, he, you know, he, he, I think he spited people early on, but then he's like, okay, no, I, I want to win. And I, I just think that kid, if he has a great season, man, that would be awesome for that kid, obviously, because he is – you think some of these Florida State quarterbacks have been maligned. Think about a Clemson fan going from Deshaun Watson to Trevor Lawrence to that, mm. where they had one of the worst offenses in the country. And he was abysmal, frankly, for almost the entire season. And um, if he goes in with that neg negativity already around him and he struggles again to start the season, that'll be a wrap, man. You can't some it's just hard to overcome that kind of negativity. Plus that kind of that lack of production when you've got somebody that you like behind him. And they do. So yeah. I, there will be there will be a lot of calls for him to not be the quarterback very early on in the season, if he struggles at all. Yeah, it's got the makings of the whole Kelly Bryant, Trevor Lawrence kind of dynamic where, although, I mean, Kelly Bryant took them to the playoff the year before. You know, he took them to the Mayo Bowl, so a little bit different there. It was Cole Stout who started in 14. Will Proctor's 38 years old, so I don't even know what that – he was – he probably played against <laughs> so Chris So he was Ricks like uh, – yeah, who, who is – was he a Clemson quarterback at yeah, least? He or was, I just, yeah, yeah, he was. Okay, I didn't know if I completely made up – so he would have played – He's 36, you said? 38. It says he uh, was the backup of Charlie Whitehurst until the 2006-2007 season. So You know what it was, Aslan? Do you remember the 2006 Clemson game where um, I, the Clemson came to Ta Tallahassee and won? I don't know what the score was. It was like 18-13. to 13. It was some ugly nonsense. It was a Jeff Bowden offense. I think one of Florida State's touchdowns was a blocked, uh, ex a blocked uh, field goal that Tony Carter returned for a touchdown. But late in that game, Florida State's down by like four points. They sack Will Proctor with like four minutes, five minutes to go. He fumbles the ball. Florida State dives on it. Will Proctor dives on it. They're wrestling around. Florida State comes out of the pile with the ball, holds it up, throws it to the referee. The crowd goes crazy. The referee says, nope, it's Clemson ball because both players had mutual possession. Mm. The term mutual possession, which I have not heard before or since, when in the world did recovering a fumble require anything other than who has the ball last? I mean, the, the, the whole pile is a mutual possession. But somebody ripped the ball out. It was a Florida State guy. He had it handed to the ref. The ref's like, nope, we're giving it back to Clemson. They ended up punting, but Florida State didn't do anything with it. Uh, we were actually up 20-12 to 12 going to the fourth quarter of that ball game. Florida so, State was? Yeah, yeah according to ESPN.
Did Tony Carter have a touchdown? No, but I think he might have blocked an extra point. The The scoring summary is all jacked up. It shows that Clemson scored a touchdown to go up 6-0. Then their kicker had a good extra point to make it 6-2. to two. Oh, okay. So that's what it was. Yeah. He turned an extra point for a touch for yeah. uh, for two points. Okay. Yeah, so, so what they lose? Twenty six to twenty. Twenty seven. Twenty seven to twenty. Okay. Yeah, they got oh, a yeah, they got a two point conversion later in that game. The Chancey Stuckey. I remember that name. Oh, I do too. He's a Georgia kid. Yeah. So, all right. Moving along. Spartan Old seventy one. It's our guy Ralph. A lot of guys. How's it? Just that's it. Just want to say hello. Hopefully there'll be a packed house at Corner Pocket on the 25th of August as we kick off the season with Corey and Jeff's first home game live show of the season. Mm -hmm. I'll be there ready to meet and greet all war chanters that I did not get a chance to meet last year. Mahalo for all the great coverage. Your friend, Ralph. There you go, Ralph. Thanks for chiming in, buddy. I can't wait to see you, man. Noel Wenda Hold'em. Hey, fellas, I'm part of the new $1 crew. I'm excited to join War Chant. I've been a fan of Wake Up, Headlines, JCS, and the All-Star crew for years now. Since I'm a first-time poster, I will say that I was born and raised in Tallahassee. Famous folks include Wally Amos, creator of the famous Amos Cookies. I had okay. no idea. Really? I don't think I ever knew that. Is that tr that's true? I don't know. He wouldn't lie to us. Also, Napoleon's not. nephew, Prince Achille Murat, which that's awesome if that's why it's called the Prince Murat. It was Napoleon's nephew. If these are true, that's amazing. My whole that my brain is in millions of pieces. I'll look it up. You you read All his right. question. I'm going to look that up. I've been going to games since I was a toddler. I'm going to miss that magical voice this year. That would be of Gene Deckerhoff. My question has to do with Mike Norvell's rules for the media. Oh, we, we talked a little about this at the top of the show, but I'll read his question just because he's a first-time guy. All of you guys, Corey, Jeff, Tom, Aslan, others, are always saying... Absolutely on Wally Amos. Yep. Okay. He was uh, yeah from Tallahassee. How about That's, that, oh, man? That's awesome. awesome. Uh, you guys are always saying, I can't say too much at the risk of upsetting coach, etc. What specifically are you not allowed to talk about? What are the reasons behind the rules? I understand not reporting on a trick play, but why does it matter if you say so-and-so went up against so-and-so in practice? Any insight will be appreciated. Keep up the great work. Daily driving would not be nearly as fun without you guys keeping me company. Thanks, man. Uh, I mean, we talked a little bit about it. It's competitive disadvantage is the word that we've we've heard from uh, the, the the liaison, the media liaison, like, hey, don't you got don't create a competitive disadvantage for us allowing you to come watch practice. So and they've even admitted to us as much that you know it's what coaches do. Like coaches do have people on staffs that go ahead and and check stuff out that's being reported, and like why not? You have these twenty people support staffs, uh, you can put them out there, and then yeah, you'll know that certain guys run with certain dudes and. Um, you know, you can expect certain packages maybe if you're hearing this guy's running with that guy, maybe certain routes that they like to run. So, And there also there's a little bit of paranoia involved too. Listen, a lot of it is is totally valid, but there's also a little bit of paranoia in there too. Um, so, yeah, they don't want to talk about injuries because then that you you can plan for who's going to maybe be there and who won't be there. So, um, and yeah, trick play stuff obviously makes sense. You've pointed that out. But, uh, I mean, I think that's pretty much the uh, the gist. You got anything else to add to it, Corey? Yeah, so Achille, or Achille Murat uh, was one of the more eccentric Bonapartes. Mm. He grew up as the crown prince of Naples, but became uh, a colorful floridable, a colorful Florida pi pioneer known as the Prince of Tallahassee. Ah. And then, yeah, he moved to uh, awesome. as a twenty-three-year-old. He moved to uh, he moved to Florida. I think he started in St. Augustine, little Augie Doggy, and then uh, shortly after that, came over to Tallahassee. Uh, lived on the Wak is it the Wakissa River? Yeah, with the Wasissa. I think it's Wasissa. Wasissa? Yeah, I should not have pronounced that, folks. I apologize. I'm, I'm just, a, I'm a carpet bagger, man. I'm from Atlanta, um, but yeah, he lived, he lived along the uh, Wasissa. I mean, that's crazy. How about that? So that's where Prince Murat comes from. Shout out to to Noel Wendell Holdem, dropping really good history on us today. Appreciate it, man. That. Imagine how much he rolled in his grave if he'd have known what was going on at the <laughs> Prince Murat Hotel in under his, in his name. Holy moly. Um, they, they won't be a sponsor with us, I assume. They're not um, around any longer. So, yeah, I think when it, when it cut to answer the question, I, yeah, it's look, if you say if we, you know, we'll say it sometimes, um, or write it sometimes, but like if, uh, you know, like if somebody like Duke Cooper gives up a, a pass to, um, anybody really, well, you know, where where you know, where Ontario Cooper is, right. You know what team he's running with. But part, they, they just don't like us to constantly or to, to tell people like depth charts because they don't. I think more than anything, it's not like Duquesne is scouring the War Chant message boards to see, man, I wonder if DJ Lund Lundy's running with the first team or not right now. 
I, it doesn't really matter to them at all. I think it's more about the players themselves and not wanting the players themselves to feel like a second teamer or feel like a third teamer. So we try not to use that verbiage as much as possible because it's just, again, it's something we've we've been requested to do. But if you read between the lines, you can tell who's playing well or who's playing with who. You know, that's 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 the that's I guess what I'll say about that. Those lines might be getting blurrier though, everybody. So uh, buckle up. Hmm. Uh, get down or lay down. It's our guy Kyle, who I think used to be in Colorado. Now he's in Charlotte, but he was born in Plant City, home of Trayshawn Ward. I moved to Clay County, Florida when I was 10, home of Leonard Skinner. Not sure which is my hometown. Newly joined the site after years of YouTube patronage. Couldn't resist the deal. I mean, for real. Question, has there ever been a deal as good as a dollar for a year subscription to Warchant? And do you believe Tate Rodemaker's progress was the real reason that sent Chubba packing to Nebraska? Love the show as always. Can't believe I'm listening to you guys for nearly five years already. No lie, man. I can't believe we've been doing it for almost five years. It's <clears throat> crazy. Um, we did one, we've been on headlines for 12. Um, that's crazy. Um, we've had some good deals like half off a year and no, like a t shirt, but a dollar for no, a whole, I, I'm saying in the history of the world, I don't know there's been a better deal than this. When you, th when you talk about the, the, uh, the value, you're getting, you're getting the value one one hundredth of the value. You're getting the value for one one hundredth of its real cost. So that'd be like buying a car for, What's one one hundredth of forty thousand dollars? I can't do that math. Four hundred? Is it four hundred dollars, right? I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Four hundred dollars. So yeah, everybody go buy a car for four hundred dollars. Oh, so, shout out yeah. to by the way, shout out to Kyle May who emailed us, uh, you know, breaking it down, it actually equals point zero zero two cents a day. That's See what I'm talking about? So, we got smart we got yeah. smart listeners. Yeah. Um so yeah, um and then with Rodemaker and Chubba. No, I don't think that so, man. Yeah, no, yeah. No. I don't think so at all. I don't. I think uh, that's Chubber, them rolling I, with McKenzie for NC State, and he's like, "All right, f it." Well, no, and I also think it's like Jordan's still just a junior, and he wasn't better than Jordan Travis, so he's looking at that, going, "Okay, I could stick it out one more year, and then maybe I'm the starting quarterback, maybe." But he also might come back, and then I don't have. It's two more years. I'm not the starting quarterback, so I think it was just. There was an open competition in Nebraska. There was no returning, uh, you know, junior or senior quarterback that had already started for multiple seasons, and that was a better shot for him to go play right away. Yeah. New OC as well, Mark Whipple. So, Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, Esk, Esk Ala Mike. It looks like maybe like Escambia or Escape and then Ala, like ALA Alabama. I don't know. Uh, shout out. I've been living in Alabama for 13 years now, but my hometown is Ormond Beach, home of golfer Matt Every. The Florida half of Florida Georgia line and former FSU pitcher Brian Kelly and gold medal Olympian Phil Delhauser. Okay. I'm 0 for 4 on those. Yeah. Um, are you more nervous about Miami or Florida? I should know the Florida half of the Florida Georgia line, right? Is it? I assume he's talking about the country band, right? Correct. Yeah. So that's the kid that played at baseball at Florida State? He did? Brian Kelly? That's what. Okay. I, I know how to read it. Home of golfer Matt Every, comma. The Florida half of Florida Georgia line and former FSU pitcher Brian Kelly. Oh, okay, so it's yeah, that's the yeah. guy. I didn't realize that Florida I didn't Georgia know his name guy. Was Brian Kelly. Huh? Yeah, how about that, Aslan? Pretty cool, right? Why don't they play more Florida Georgia line at the at Hauser? Why don't they build a new Dick Hauser? Why don't pay for it? Why don't you pay for it, Brian Kelly? Huh? What huh? are you doing with your money? Come on, what are man. you doing with your money, man? For uh, heaven's sake! I'm more nervous um, about Miami. Yep, yep, I think I am too. It's early, though. We still got months and months, but yeah, I'm probably more nervous about Miami. Oh, Not that I, I get nervous. Actually, I'm I more. Don't know. I'll the take nervous it isn't the word, right? It's uh. Well, he's, that's a question. That's a word he doubt. Put in I, there. But I, I'm I'm more skeptical slash doubtful that they'll win that game. I guess that's that's why I come back to thinking about it now. Is that you know if you lose at Miami, that's not you know it's it's not shameful. I mean, it's unfortunate. Like, if you lose the Florida, I hate losing the Florida, but, like, I hate losing the Florida inside of Doak Campbell Stadium. Uh, and, like, if you were to lose to them on Friday night when there's nothing else going on except yeah. for that game. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, probably, you know, it'll affect your bowl game a little bit, which whatever, people might not care that much, but it might send us from Charlotte to Shreveport, which would be a bummer. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. It's, yeah, I, I don't want to lose the Florida at home. I changed my mind, Florida. 
Florida it boat would be guy. worse. Which would be worse for Mike Norvell? Oh. And I think the answer is Florida. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, because yeah, they're both first year coaches. Yeah. But yeah, if you lose at home to a first year coach, uh, not good. Florida boat guy, greetings, Warchant family. Wake up, new member taking advantage of the dollar menu. Uh, nice. <laughs> Born and raised in Panama City, home of Burt Reed, J. Robb, and the world's most beautiful beaches, I now reside in Charleston, South Carolina, where there is, to my surprise, a great community of Seminoles. Charleston is home to Hootie and the Blowfish, Bill Murray, Post Tavern, a Sullivan's Island bar restaurant dedicated to the great work of Edgar Allan Poe. Okay, cool. I, all right. I didn't go to Post. I was up there a couple months ago for Brady's baseball thing, and uh, we didn't we did not uh, go to Post Tavern. It sounds cool, though. Yeah, well, it's an island bar, Sullivan's Island. Did you guys go off the mainland? Oh, no, we did not. No. There you no. go. That's My question for your wise consideration, I'm hearing a lot of optimism when talking about the defense, veterans that understand the expectations and are capable as well as promising young talent. Would you take the over or under at one and a half shutouts this season? Under. Under. Uh, no one shuts out anybody anymore. Florida boat guy it just doesn't happen, man. Also, can we count on the War Chant family to resurrect the spiked baseball tradition and present them during post game press conferences? Is well, that we what won't do, do that. Um, but it, uh, Chip Baker's still around, yeah. and Chip Baker's who started that. He used to give us spiked baseball. He was the uh, former Florida State baseball coach. Now he's like the director of operations for Florida State baseball. He's been a part of the program for going on nearly 40 years now. Yeah. Um, so he used to give us spiked baseball to Mickey Andrews every time they had a shutout. That was a, that was a tradition. I think Mickey had 30-something of them. Uh, it's a really cool idea. It's a good tradition. So, no, we wouldn't do that because we don't want to step on Chip's toes. Chip's still around. He's still... Uh, very much around and involved with Florida State baseball. So if that happens, say they shut out Miami thirty-one to nothing, that's going to be Chip Baker delivering that ball to Adam Fuller on uh, on Sunday. Yeah, but I mean, I, I think even Alabama or Georgia, whoever's got the number one defense, they're over under. I think I I, I can't imagine what the, a Vegas line would be on any team having more than one and a half shutouts in a football season this day. Yeah, just and it's not because. The, uh, and I get the question. Yeah, um, it's gonna be good defense. Just, it's gonna be good defense. You're gonna like what you see. I guarantee it. Yeah, they're just not, they're just hard to do now with the parity in the sport. If you're up forty-one to six, or four, sorry, forty-one to nothing, yeah. you're going to play your younger players, lots of them, to get them valuable reps. Odds are the team that's losing forty-one to nothing would like to score some points. So even though you have your backups in the game, they probably run their starters out typically to try to get at least some points at least one touchdown, not just to make the score look respectable, because it wouldn't, 41-7 to seven isn't respectable, but to have the offense have some success going into the next week. So it's, and, I, and also, like, back in the day in the 90s, Florida State's second teamers legitimately were better than many of the starters they were playing. Well, that's never, that's not the case really anywhere with any teams anymore. Maybe Georgia last year with their defense was better than a lot of first-team offenses they were facing, but that's, that's, uh, very, very few and far between. Choctaw, uh, Choctaw, rather, I apologize. Choctaw County, Knoll. Love being able to get awesome seminal content from Warchant. That's it. That's a message. Oh, nice. That's yeah. good. That's quick. We, we like we, that. Hey, awesome. we love that you're getting it. Yeah, shout out. Johnson Knoll 22, Wake Up, formerly known as Premier Youth Theater from Claremont, Florida. I remember, yeah, uh, on YouTube videos. I think you said some bad things about me, but it's okay. Uh, I just bought eight tickets for the family for game one, the 27th. I'm coming up from Central Florida. What is the pregame meeting location if I missed that question earlier? I know the game uh, is considered a third scrimmage, but seriously, what are your thoughts on showing the full playbook for LSU or holding back? Go Knowles, my pregame plan, drink to Luna, eat registered sausage for breakfast, stop at Lake mm. City for Zaxby's. <laughs> Score prediction, 45-10 FSU, go Knowles. Nice. Um, well, we'll, Jeff and I will be at Corner Pocket on Friday night. Maybe Aslan will make an appearance, too. It'd be nice. It'd be nice yeah, if he did that yeah. um, for the for the season opener. We we have our uh, our live show from 5 to 6 or 5.30 to 6.30. I can't remember what those hours were. Um, I think it was 5 to 6. It probably should be 5.30 to 6.30, but it's, it's a happy hour that we do for every home game on Friday. Jeff and I do. So we'll be there at Corner Pocket Friday night before the game. Saturday, uh, Tom and Jeff do the pregame show from where, Aslan? Tentative plans uh, to do it at the Hotel Indigo in College Town, so you can hang out and then walk right to the game, walk through all the tailgates, pick up maybe somebody's grilling a register sausage, maybe somebody has Zaxby's fingers, maybe somebody's got corner pocket wings. 
Maybe somebody's got the Luna coffee at their tailgate. Stop by, pick it up, and then head to the stadium. So, yeah, uh, pregame show two hours before kickoff home games, one hour uh, before the road games. So uh, it's going to be fun. And then we got the watch-throughs, Dominic Robinson, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, so I was thinking about this, too. So they kind of are in a, not, I don't want to say a tough position. They're going to absolutely uh, take it to Duquesne. And if they don't, I'll be concerned. But maybe I won't because they're saving it for LSU. I wonder what that's how that's going to factor in. I'm sure they're going to get up early. They want to get up a lead early in this game and cruise the rest of the way. Um, but I do wonder how much they want to show how vanilla they do want to be. But I, you, if you can't be vanilla and beat an FCS team, which they lost you last year, so I should just stop sure. the sentence right yep. there. Yep, yep, yep. I would say, uh, look, man, the offense is the offense, though. It's not like they're going to have like 12 to 14 special trick plays for LSU. It, LSU will have a pretty good idea of what's coming. It's just a matter if they can stop it and the Florida State executes well. Um, so I don't think, um, you know, I, I don't think you hold back necessarily against Duquesne. You just, what you hope you do is your starters don't play a ton. And that's how you hold back. But the offense is the offense and you need to go out there and execute. This this program ain't used to putting up 30 or 40 points on anyone ever anymore. So if you get a chance to go run up the score and to go get you 35 and a half, go do it. Um, and don't just say, well, we don't want LSU to know that Jordan Travis can run. So let's just never have him run at all. Let's never keep it on his own read. And ah, we don't want people to know that Johnny Wilson's tall and we might throw it to him in the end zone. It's like, man, those guys need to go do that in a game too. They need to go, Jordan Travis needs to go get hit and get tackled um, or at least attempted to be tackled. And Johnny Wilson needs to go make plays with people around him in a game, even if they're Duquesne players, go make plays. Like, I, I don't I don't know that you really vanilla it up enough. I mean, if you have a few special plays, then yeah, obviously keep those in your back pocket. And that's, but just a few, everything else, I think you just, you want to execute well and you, you run what you run. Actually, now that I think about it, you can show all your, you know, your base concepts. You can show a lot of stuff and then obviously do the opposite against LSU, right? You know, LSU, we saw this look on tape against Duquesne, but yeah. flip it around on him. So. Yeah, well, and that's the beauty of getting to play first is yeah. that you know whatever you do, LSU is going to scout it, and they're going to have a plan for it, so you can counter off of that. That's the beauty of getting to play first and making them have to scout you. All right, a couple uh, more. Uh, oh, sorry, I was just going to say the downside sorry. is you don't get to see what LSU is doing. Yeah, that's true. Uh, they started practice on Thursday, I think, by the way. Um, that Butte guy's back at practice. But apparently oh. he had two surgeries because he didn't rehab correctly the first time. So uh, he's he's out there, though. Um, he's practicing? Yeah, he's practicing. Oh, so. all right. Okay. Uh, Gator underscore. It's Gator 188, a.k.a. Gator Kirk, but now it's just Gator underscore. Uh, wake up, war chant in a different Gator community. Oh, the excitement. What is your go-to workout song? Sorry for changing my name to Gator underscore from Gator 188. One day I'll post about where I was born and famous people from that city. Go Knowles. Mm, there you go. Um, Do you have one, Aslan? No. Sailing, Christopher Cross. Yeah, that's not a bad one. I'm more of an Arthur's theme guy. Okay. When you get caught between the moon and New York City, that's a that's a good one. I like to. I don't. Um, I'm trying to think, man. Uh, when I listen to music, like in my my house, when I used to work, be able to work out, I'm still getting you know acclimated to not be able to work out for a few more weeks. At least not like I want to. Uh, listen to a lot of Pearl Jam and a lot of REM. Okay. But not like Everybody Hurts REM or Shiny Happy People, but like they're, you know, they're, they're earlier, better stuff. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a couple songs I probably would go to. If I, I don't lift all that heavy anymore, man. After I threw out my back in February, I am done doing squats. So I haven't done bench press in a while because my shoulder, my shoulder feels good now. So, yeah, I mean, I just have my music on shuffle and it's pretty much anything like sometimes taylor swift pops in there and i like her voice and okay. i just keep lifting i don't stop I i'll tell you two that i like uh which i sh- i mean it's crazy i'll admit this but it's fine um well one I, the stronger kanye west okay yeah that's been on my mix for a while now yeah. just g- gets you gets you juiced a little bit Pastor and then Walters, uh yeah, My Chemical Romance. Oh, my God. All right. Uh, yeah. Is it Helena? Is yeah. that the song that Helena. I know and like? Helena, Helena. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So those Look two are, uh, have been go-tos for a while. Yeah. Man, you're, you're in touch with the youth. I love it. Yeah, right. Those songs it. are like 15 years old. They are. Yeah, man. Yeah. Helena, that was like my last year of college. 
Uh, Donnie B016. I'm Donnie. I'm from Indiana, Pennsylvania. Oh, oh is, is that I? Is that UI, PUI? No, that's Purdue Could University. Be. Yeah, no, you're Sorry. wrong. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hometown of Jimmy Stewart. Is that the actor the, uh, or is that the driver? Yeah. You're thinking of Tony Stewart. Maybe. Tony Stewart, Smoke, yeah. Our Jimmy Stewart, that's the actor, right? That's a cool one, yeah. He's a very famous. Well, he was. Wonderful He's Life? Been dead now for a while. something, right? Wonderful Life? Yeah. Yep, yep, that's the one. Uh, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, I think. He was in that. Okay. Uh, does the possible rule change to unlimited transfers hurt us or help us in the current state we are in? Help. Helps. Yeah, absolutely. There aren't, like... Look at the just. I guess I would say just look at the last two or three years. That's that's the proof you need. Like yes, I would say of the guys they've lost, the only one that you really would have, and we'll see what Brownlee does. Maybe he breaks through and has an All ACC season. The one that you really miss is Durden, yeah. right? Who had a good year at NC State yeah. and is a good player, and he's back again, which I didn't realize. Like that's a guy you miss. Um, just that size, the athleticism. He didn't play well for you in 2020, but he did in 19, and he played well for NC State last year. He's a good player. But think of all the people you've brought in compared to who you lost that you miss. It's really not close. You know, Jamie Robinson, Keir Thomas, Jermaine Johnson, uh, these receivers, uh, Trey Benson, Ja'Shawn Corbin. Like, the whole, all the people that have done anything at all almost for this program the last two or three years have been guys that started Jordan Travis that have started at other schools. So, um, and Florida state's not losing great players, not yet anyway, knock on wood, yeah. but the guys that are good stay there. haven't been many of them. I get it. But the, so I, you know, I think it for, for whatever reason, I guess it, it's, it's really beneficial for Florida state right now. Yeah. I don't have anything else to say. That's correct. All that's right. Correct, there you go. So. And that's the last one, actually. So oh, we did out. it. All right. Uh, that was 42 uh, comments and questions. So, Oh, man. We well, yeah, we got, we're got. we going to have more subscribers than ever before. It's the floodgates have opened up. So we're going to we're gonna have 60, 70. Our whole, our whole weeks are just going to be <laughs> Renegade Express questions. I'm going to talk about the games. I'm like, yeah, this guy wants to know um, whatever. All right. My um, favorite workout song. I got to get to practice. When are you coming back down to Tallahassee, Corey? Are you see I'm coming back later tonight, buddy. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. I'll be there. I'll be there at Tuesday practice. I'll be doing headlines on Tuesday. And uh, Stephanie and I, hopefully just Stephanie mainly, are uh, is hosting trivia Tuesday night at Corner Pocket. Okay. And there's going to be an FSU round. It's not going to be all FSU trivia, all but right. there is going to be an FSU sports round of five questions. So we're uh, So that's exciting. So get excited, everyone. All right, teams practicing. We'll have interviews, wrap-ups, observations over on the website, which you should join and sign up for because it's only $1 for a whole year, uh, 365 days, like the whole like the whole thing, whole entire thing. So do that, then listen to the Jeff Cameron Show on 93.3 FM or War Chant TV. And, um, yeah, I, I'm running out of steam. I'm sorry. We're done, though. We're done. Going out we to did. practice. I'm going to have some DeLuna now. We'll all be good. And we'll do another show. We'll have Tuesdays with Tom, most likely. So uh, come back. Subscribe to the podcast. Thumbs up. Five-star rating and review. Tell Corey you love him. I love Corey. We love you guys. It's Wake Up War Champ presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill.